It's Macy's One Day Sale with great deals of the day, just in time for back to school. Like 30 to 50% off backpacks, handbags, and more. And 40 to 50% off jeans they'll love. And get 60% off luggage from Travel Pro, Samsonite, Delcy, and more at Macy's One Day Sale. Plus, Star Rewards members earn rewards even faster during Macy's Star Money Bonus Days, going on now. The world is always on. But you shouldn't be. Put junk sleep to bed. At Mattress Firm's Black Friday Now Sale, save up to 60% on Sealy with Queen Mattresses starting at $279.99. Talk to a sleep expert today and unjunk your sleep. Hello and welcome to another episode of any sort of number after 66 and before 100 of Meta Sidekicks. Watch this be the 100th one. That would be funny. It would be. I just did the Dibbix box. Dibbix box, dick in a box, and that was 66, which I think is funny. <laughs> I think it'd be funnier if it was the chair episode. Mm. But I'm Liv. This is M. M. Say hi. What's up? And we're your sidekicks to all things metaphysical as psychic mediums, twin flames, and comedic geniuses about all things spiritual, paranormal, metaphysical, and in between. And today, we're talking about Annabelle. Specifically- Actually, we're talking about the reaction video that we did for the Overnight channel because you guys literally almost in every comment tell us that we should react to this video. So, we are. <laughs> yep. But we're reacting to the second one because I put out a poll and you guys were like, mm, do this one. Because the first one, it just talks about the like lore behind all of the objects. So if you guys like this, we'll do the other parts. Yeah. As psychic mediums, we want a little want to know as little as possible. So reacting to the first part would not be, be counterintuitive because all they do is talk about everything and we're like, yeah, psh, we don't need to know anything. We're going to ace this test. Every answer is C. Let's go. Yeah, their part three is like the investigation part and they told the interwebs that they almost lost all the footage because it got corrupted. So they had to like do things to make it like not unwatchable. Did we react to number three or was it number two? Two. Okay. Where they release Annabelle, which is why Liv was like, we're talking about Annabelle. So yeah. That's basically what they covered in that. Is that what I talk about? We're talking about Annabelle. That's how you sound. Yeah. I'm a psychic medium. I'm a flower child <laughs> golden retriever. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was weird. Um, every time M has talked about Annabelle, okay, if you guys are new, we talked about the psychic medium thing. We talked about the twin flame thing, but do you really know what the twin flame is? Let me tell you. It's the fact that M is darkness Everdeen, and I am sunshines, rainbows, and unicorns Golden out of my retriever. butt at all points and times. She is uh, the thing the black that cat. haunts your nightmares from the ceiling, oh, 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 oh. and I am the thing that says, would you like cookies? Is there milk? May I take your hat, sir? May I take your hat, sir? <laughs> so I don't watch scary movies, although Patreon did make me watch scary movies because we reached 56 patrons. <laughs> Because Liv is an Aries and she can't say no to a challenge. Even though I'm a giant crybaby, I still, if you tell me that I can't do something, I'm immediately going to do it in the most obnoxious man way possible. Except I'm still asking her to go to the conjuring house and making that a goal and she still says no to me. What was it? 1,000 or 2,000 patrons? 1,000 is a what? You said if we make $10,000 on patrons, it would be about 1,000 sub, well, 1,000 patrons. I'm going to make it 2000 and we'll go to the Conjuring house. Okay, I'm going to make it a goal. You guys ready for that? I'm if, doing it. I'm okay 2, with 000. that. It's going to be really hard to do. I'll, I'll let you know. However, if we do that, I'm putting it on there as <laughs> a goal. If we're at 2000 2, patrons. I'm also surprised you didn't give me some weird number. We'll ask. Like set 57. <laughs> yeah, no. If we reach 2,000 patrons, we'll go to the Conjuring, Conjuring House. If we reach 2,500 patrons, we'll ask Scam and Colby to come with us, too. Because so far, we haven't talked to them. 
<laughs> we're too scared. Everyone's like, oh, we really wish you that you collab with Sam and Colby. And I'm like, that sounds really cool. It would be really great. But also, we're not going to talk to them because that's really scary unless like, they talk really to us cool first. really cool places. I want to go with them. They have to talk to us first, though. They're going to the UK for the next season. I want to eat a crumpet. Yeah. Well, anyways, I just want to preface this before we get into this, that we reacted to the uh, the devil's rocking chair. And when you watch the reaction video, you can see us both be like, it's not haunted. I'd sit in that chair. It's fine. And it is because our spirit guides were blocking the information because we had no prior knowledge of that entity. So going in blind for something like that would be really dangerous because we would be very open to the information instead of understanding the thing in which we were talking to. However, with Annabelle, the reason why we were able to get information is because both Liv and I have prior knowledge of Annabelle. Yeah, but my you big- may not have a lot, but mm-hmm. it's you still have knowledge of this is a scary demon. <laughs> Every time you talk about it, I always see a little girl with blonde hair and she has like the dumb, scary little like blue and white or pink and white dress. I want to say blue and white mostly. Pink and white is not as like prevalent, but uh, I do understand that she is a Raggedy Ann doll by society standards. By what she is. <laughs> yeah. So. But people think that Annabelle is an actual child, so. Oh, is that why they make her look like a weird girl in the movies that you talk about? No, they make her look like a weird girl in the movies. Copyright infringement? I'm sorry. (laughs) Because they think it's scarier. Why would you have a doll that literally has, like, gashes in its face and skin looks like you took all of the saturation and pink out of it? I'm sorry, but a giant Raggedy Ann doll is much more horrifying to me. Yeah, but that was, like, the time, you know? Raggedy Ann dolls were, like, vintage. My mom used to really like Raggedy Ann dolls because she used to get picked on as a child. They would call her an unloved carrot top because she <laughs> literally was the redheaded stepchild that was adopted. Yeah. So she's like, I really liked Raggedy Ann because people liked her and I felt like if I looked like her or because I looked like her, people would like me, mm-hmm. but it's fine. So yeah. when I learned that Annabelle was a Raggedy Ann doll, I was like, <laughs> no! <laughs> Do you want to hear the story of Annabelle that I know out of my ass? Yeah, because I don't know anything besides that people are scared of her and that there's movies about her because yeah, you talk so about them. The story goes that this nurse, maybe like a nursing student at this point, finds or her mother gives her this raggedy on down that she found at like a secondhand store or something like that. And they figure out that there is something very wrong with this doll because it keeps moving around and keeps doing really weird things. I would have 100% thought that gravity was changing and that it was the end of the world, not that the doll was haunted. I'd be like, who changed the thermostat? Because I'm quite sure it's changing the gravity in our house. Little Timmy, it's set at 70. We're not making it 68. We don't have the money. So they ask a medium to come. And the medium picks up on this little girl spirit. And she says that the little girl spirit, I believe, is in like a car crash or something and has attached itself to this doll because she like lived in the area or the crash was in the area or something like that. So they were like, she's just in this doll. Well, things got scarier and scarier and worse and worse. And they finally bring the doll to Ed and Lorraine Warren and... Ed and Lorraine Warren explain that human souls don't necessarily attach themselves to things like this demonic entities do, and the demonic entity is using the vision of this little girl in order to gain their trust. And in the movie, it basically is like they feel bad about this little girl that this medium told them about. So they're like, you can come into the doll. Like, we'll allow you to come into the doll. And Ed and Lorraine Warren were like, that was a bad idea because you just invited a demon into this doll, not a little girl. Are you scared now? You have a scared look on your face. Oh, I was thinking about two separate things. One, Kelsey Davies, who has a soul in a doll, according to her. I mean, you see her, no? Well, I do. But okay. if Ed and Lorraine Warren are correct, then there isn't a soul of a girl in the doll. It's a demon. They're also demonologists, and they may be in, like, an echo chamber, if you know what that means. No. Like, when people use the term echo chamber, you surround yourself with things that are of your own viewpoint. 
so oh. you don't see other people's viewpoint. So they might just have an echo chamber of, it's always a demon, because that's when they get called. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay, because that's what I thought they were saying. But it yeah. just, my, my egotistical thought was, if they're right, then it's a demon. But also, as a psychic medium, I see a girl from the Southwest. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think they, like... A Attach themselves to the doll in the sense of like, I'm going to use this doll as a body because I don't Ugh. have a body anymore. Because I think people believe that type of thing, but I don't think they're uh, like a human soul attaches themselves in that way. No, it's, it's more like of a, Peggy. Like, yeah, it's more like an association to this thing. It's like you, you associating yourself to your house. It's the fingerprint. Yeah. The fragment. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not an attachment necessarily. It's just they are associated with this object. Yeah, no, I get it. Whereas Annabelle, I feel like, is like, we're in this for whatever, but it might also be because she's in a weird box. I don't know. I was just playing devil's advocate because people also keep telling us that we need to collab with Mackie and Amanda and Kelsey Davies. <laughs> well, everyone they know that's uh, well known, mm. you know? <laughs> I want people to tell other people that they need to collab with us. I mean, they are. I want or at least they're telling cool. us. However, we just don't have as big an audience, which is why it's not at the scale or level that it is for the people who have a lot of subscribers. Four months. Yet. It's going to be in four months. I asked Liv for her predictions today <laughs> of when is things going to start taking off? She gave me what? September? End of September. End of September. Yeah, we can uh, do this full time and then apparently in four months we're going to have a lot of subscribers. Is that what you're saying? The 21st time of September! Something like that. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so playing devil's advocate with the things in my head, no pun intended, pun intended. We are also going to talk about like inviting things into the house cuz like people are like don't let the fairies in. You can't let them into your house. But like we, you and I don't think that fairies are like bad like that. So maybe people There are fairies that are like that though. Well, yeah. That are like I'm going to steal your soul. Really? Yeah. Well, at least that's what you told me. <laughs> I'm adding that to the list of things that I want to reincarnate as. So next An evil up, fairy? Yes. You think your soul is going to incarnate as an evil fairy? That steals people's eyelashes. Exactly. <laughs> 40 lashes, but it's going to be like that. I am going to give you 40 lashes. Your every last eyelash wish. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because eyelash wishes are a thing. And if I take all of your eyelash wishes, no wishes for you. Flower child, evil plants. No Not soup for people. you. Yeah, we talked about what type of dimension I would like to have as my, like, pocket place from Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, the uh, infinite domain place. Yeah. yeah. What was yours going to be? I don't remember because I don't remember this conversation. <laughs> oh, no. You said something about something. Maybe it had spiders in it. It definitely did not have spiders in it. No? That's when I have my horrifying hypnopomnic hallucination dreams where I see spiders crawling all over my walls. Mm-hmm. Because Mine was like spiders. some sort of mind bending thing about like you go there and you get all of the perceptions that people have of you, whether they're good or bad, until it just like makes you go insane. Something like that. Got you. What are we talking about? We're talking about Annabelle. Oh, fairies and Annabelle. Because you okay. were talking about letting things into your house and they were like... No, letting Ooh. things... They wanted to invite the little girl who is a demon into the doll itself. Oh, I thought it was already in the doll. I don't know. That's they weird. Talk to a medium. The medium thought that this demon was a little girl. And she, they were like, you can use this doll as her body. And invited it into the doll. But that's also happened in the movie. So I don't, I don't know. It's really hard to research Annabelle because... It's so convoluted. There's also a movie about it. <laughs> Weird. But Because, yeah. I mean, like, if a doll was moving around my house, I'd be like, all right, there's something already in that. Or someone turned up the thermostat and the gravity's going hanky. Haywire. Yeah. Well, apparently inviting them or allowing them in the doll made it stronger or something. Not well, yeah, because you invite it. You give yeah. it permission to fuck with you. Yeah. Yeah. Intentions. Yeah. Weird. One of the questions I have for you is, do you know what happened to the doll before it was purchased by her mother-in-law or whoever bought, gave it to her? Because I always see a man that has, like, my color hair or a blonder, and he talks about the doll. And he every time he comes forward, he's like, you can't talk to the doll because that would be scary for you, so I'm going to be here. And he has a southern twang. 
I think it's really funny that you um, said that because we just, before we started this podcast, I was like, all right, we're going to talk about Annabelle, but I don't know how we're going to pull stuff out of our butt to talk about this because it was a lot and a little all at the same time reacting to the overnight channel. So like, we're just going to talk to the souls around the doll. And I'm thinking, there's no fucking souls around this doll. This is weird. It literally just sits in a room of other antiques that are and are not haunted in a weird ass thing that looks like an outhouse with a freaking panel in the front so you can see it. And uh, I saw a man, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, isn't he in his like late 50s? I see him younger because I see everyone younger. In their 30s, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I see everyone older because old people have stories and they make me feel safe. Yeah, he has like a little girl. Mm. Blonde hair. It's like girly curly and it's kind of like <sighs> shoulder-ish length. Is this doll bought or did he make it? I feel like he made it, but I don't know for sure. See, me too. Because the doll looks like Raggedy Ann, but it also doesn't look like Raggedy okay. Ann doll. Because I was like, this is weird too, because I, I was literally watching this movie with uh, Janelle, which you'll you'll meet soon. But uh, I was telling her immediately, I was like, there's this man here telling me about the doll. And he was like, it's really good that they didn't use the actual Raggedy Ann doll image of the doll and use this like scary portrayal of her because it would give the doll or the demon in the doll more power if it was the actual Raggedy Ann doll. So he's like, we kind of manipulated things to make them think that this would be scarier if they use this weird doll in the white dress type thing. Yeah. No, I'm trying to look up a picture of it in the box. But yeah, he, the spirit, started talking to me and immediately was like, I'm going to talk to you on behalf of this doll because you should not be talking to this doll. You also are not going to realize that everything's a lie because I was expecting to talk to like a little girl or like some sort of thing that was like in the doll but no this man came forward and I was like yo <laughs> I'm trying to look up original pictures of Raggedy Ann dolls um I mean it kind of looks like it like the original stuffed Raggedy Ann dolls but I also feel like someone made it I don't know it's weird it freaks me out a little bit yeah, I don't know. I uh, also that's one of the things I told Janelle is I feel like this man made the doll. Yeah, I in def- some way, shape, or form is the maker or creator of the doll, and he made it for his like little girl. Hang but on. something happened. I don't know if the little girl died, and that's where all of the like really dark stuff started happening. And then he was like, "I can't have this in my house," and they got rid of the doll and put it in the secondhand shop. But I'm I have no idea. But that's like what I perceive is this man that has almost like blonde hair and he has a little girl and he made the doll for <laughs> your little girl. What? Um, when time period does he say he's uh, from? Time periods are hard for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but sometimes they give you information as to what time period they lived in. Time periods are hard for me because I don't understand how to get time periods visually. <laughs> okay, well, stop thinking that time periods are hard because that's what's going to block Well, I you. mean, I realize that. <laughs> Just ask He's him. in sepia, if that makes sense. They usually show me it in a uh, photography standpoint. Okay. So usually like turn of the century. Does that make sense? Photo decade of se- sepia, S-E-P-I-A, sepia colors yeah i also might be saying that wrong <laughs> okay and he he's got brown pants on and in overalls and then he has an old timey hat and then he's got a white sh- button up shirt okay yeah it says that it was popular in the 1880s so yep. like, turn like turn of the, of the century yeah all right well i just need you to understand that johnny gruel is the man who created Raggedy Ann dolls. One day in 1915, as the story goes, Johnny Gruel's daughter, Marcella, brought him an old rag doll. He drew a face on the worn fabric and called the doll Raggedy Ann. Gruel is a cartoonist and illustrator who wrote a children's book about Raggedy Ann in 1918. So, like, uh, hang on, let me see where he was from, because you said southern accent. Yeah, because he makes me want to have a southern twang. Uno momento, por favor, 
gotta find where he was born. It also makes me feel like he's born. not really far down. Like, you know how people, <laughs> like, I don't, like, mid. It's, like, souther than us. <laughs> yeah. But where but people they, have that that yeah. southern sort of accent that That's what isn't, he's telling the, me. isn't yeah. the deep south. It's, it's not, not a like southern belt. southern belt, yeah. Yeah. That's well, what he's telling me. Uh, He was born in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> so... I think people what does he from look like? Illinois have uh, accents like that. So, yeah, because uh, immediately, I don't know. It's too dark a photo, and he's also a lot older. <laughs> well, he's in his like forties there, but I yeah. see him older than that. But well, you yeah. see him younger than that. Yeah, <laughs> but oh, that's like I'm his face shape. It. If that makes any sense to you, yeah. it's just a little bit more regal. <laughs> no, I get it. And is he a little girl? <laughs> His daughter's name was Marcel. Yeah. Freaks me out because uh, I thought I was just losing my mind, which is why I brought it up because I was like, do you see them or am I just crazy? No, I saw <laughs> him. And uh, Marcella has in, oh, it says Marcella, a raggedy Ann story. And the front character that looks like it's written, yep, it says by Johnny Gruel. <laughs> she has blonde hair and it's curly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it, guys. I did not look this up at all. No, because you when didn't. you look up Annabelle, the only thing that comes up is this nurse story. Uh, period. I'm gonna fucking lose it. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, they only have one picture of him on here, but look, this is Marcella as he depicts him in the cartoonist version. <laughs> He's probably talking to you because you looked like her when you were little. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, she even has the same little nose like you. Yeah, because he was like, I'm going to protect you from this thing because it's really, 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 really bad. Yeah. And he, I obviously did not realize that because when we reacted to that video, I was shaking in my boots. Well, he also was a cartoonist and illustrator, and that's what you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he talks in cartoons because that's how my brain works. Yeah. Which is hilarious. That's yeah. really cute and also disturbing. Yeah, that's crazy that I literally got that from just watching the Annabelle movie and telling Janelle what I was seeing. So, Janelle, if you're listening to this, I'm pooping your pants. Because, you, yes, that's exactly what she looks like. Does she have oh the God. little sailor's uniform and everything? <laughs> I uh, I see her in, like, a white dress, and it's, like, a little bit frilly on the bottoms. And then I see her with, like, a bow in her hair. And the doll happened in the 80s, though, right? Like, the person that got it, and it started being creepy? I don't know. I didn't look at that much. I literally just remember, like, a half-assed story of what I looked up, because I was like, I don't understand why I'm seeing this man, and he's telling me all of this information. So I tried to look that up, and I couldn't find anything about it. So, I don't know. 1970s. Gotcha. Which is why I see the 70s and 80s um, of, like, when it started happening, but yeah, it wasn't haunted when the doll was originally theirs. Oh, yeah. Do you Something think that happened. the doll was Marcella's? No. I don't know. I just know that he had this doll and I feel like he gave it to her, but I I could be wrong because uh, I miss things when I see visual information. Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. Because um, I don't think you can find information about where Annabelle was made. You just get the nurse story. Yeah, it's weird. The original Raggedy Ann. Yeah, they came in boxes, which is crazy. I think my mom said she used to have one, too. He's saying that's why she's in a box now. Ah. It wouldn't necessarily work for other things. Because I was like, that's dumb. I don't it... understand why you put it in a box and it would actually work. And they're like, they're putting it back in the box. Like Toy Story. Put that thing back where it came from. Or so help me is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, I'm glad that the creator of the actual original Raggedy Ann doll, whether this is the one that he made Marcella or not, which I don't think it is. Yeah, um, I don't know. Is here to talk to you about it. Yeah. <laughs> It's really funny. It's kind of like a mad scientist type thing of like, you created this, so now I have to be the thing that protects it. But like, it's not that he protects it. It's just that he's... He's protecting me from it. The curator. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it's called? He's my tour guide. Yeah. As what we like to call it. That's really funny. 
Yep, a curator, a keeper, or custodian of a museum or other collection because he's the reason that it is thing that's here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> oh no! Do you get any weird things like that? Because I, I uh, thought that was in my head. Well, no. I think yes. So sorry, I'm saying yes because they're telling me yes. I'm talking to somebody that's like in the museum that's next to her and might have been the person that this woman bought the doll from. But you're talking to the man that actually created the doll. So I'm talking to a separate man than you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's interesting because he's like we're different, and I just asked him, and he said yes. So. This is the guy that the doll came from to okay. get to the museum. Got you. And you're talking to the person that just created Raggedy Dan, Raggedy Ann of themselves. Yeah. Yes. Because I felt like he started making dolls because of his little daughter. Yeah. But I'm also fighting the so. instinct to run away because all I hear is groaning and like they're making the soul next to me look scary. Oh, is it because of Annabelle? Yeah. Because we're man talking is about it. Well, this man is surrounding me with golden light. I That's what I was doing last week. I feel like I'm in a field. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was doing to you last week. So it's a good time. It's my time to be sick now. Yeah. You felt sick last week. I'm feeling you, sick this week. You had fireworks coming out of your ass last week. I did. I tried to use the fireworks to make you feel all fuzzy on the inside, but I also have the attention span of a golden retriever. So, yeah. So who's the man that you're seeing? He is the one that used to have the doll. I feel like he had it for his grandchild. So what happened to make it haunted? I feel like there was a girl that passed. It might have been his grandchild. And that's where all the darkness came from? So this is going to be hard because I'm talking to a soul of a man that's around the doll. However, the doll itself does not want me it's to like say things. It's like manipulating things. things. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I'm... S- it's, uh, That's why this man came for me because everything else would get manipulated by the doll. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard. But mm-hmm. I also have had this happen sometimes when I'm talking to other souls, like during readings. And I think it's just my own dark things around me because that's not a bad thing to have dark things around you it just is a thing it's just balance (laughs) yeah so i'm kind of used to having things get distorted while i'm talking to them but i know that it's just because when i talk to souls they're in heaven or spirit but it's kind of like they step out of that a little bit and have like this sort of vestibule area in which they speak to me from i can like see into wherever they are sometimes too but it's not physical so for a dark thing to manipulate the sort of picture that I'm seeing is like them scratching the CD. Doesn't change the CD. They're just trying to make it sound silly, which yeah. is like, you could try harder than that <laughs> kind of thing. But, you know, anyways, why are you staring at me like that? It's scaring me. <laughs> Sorry. This thing is like, I'm trying to get information about what you're talking about. And subconsciously, I'm getting the information and it's not happy about it because they're telling me what you're about to say is like, it's Achilles heel. Yeah. And you're looking at me with that fear in your eyes. Well, (laughs) when dark things get in, like get to me, I see things physically. Ah, yeah. So I'm seeing things over there and Uh then there's something behind us. I know. I can feel it behind me. I still have the gold field, but the, the darkness is coming closer. It'll because be I'm fine. like, information <laughs> looks all around. It'll be fine. But yeah, they show me that this is like the the weak spot. Yeah, I feel like this little, this guy's da- granddaughter died, but he also tells me no. So maybe it was like she was killed, like in malpractice. I think that's what it means. Because he's like, she died, but it's not like she died of natural causes. It's not like we were sad. It's we were angry. Ah, that's so why I, it's different. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like a Sally House case, but not really, because the Sally House was an accident Mm -hmm. in as much contextual terms as you can think of. But I feel like the way his granddaughter died was malpractice of like it actually was their fault and they did something that they knew was wrong. And then when they passed, it's like this guy, this grandfather guy knew that it was their own fault and they're not going to say that it was type thing. Um... And he's like, so the only thing we had left of my granddaughter was her Raggedy Ann doll. And I think because of the anger and frustration and bad things, that's what this thing attached to. Because I see like tentacles, like Medusa type shit, crawling closer into it. So I feel like when they gave the doll away, 
He said, I didn't give the doll away. Someone sold it on accident. Something like that. It was manipulated so that that would happen. So that it could go inside of it. Yeah, because they put love around it. But that was the most darkest association that it could have. They're telling me that that's like the, um, they associated (laughs) this horrible thing with this girl and the association was with this doll, which is what was the, like, anchor for this dark thing to attach itself to. However, it couldn't do it when it was in the hands of this man. In their house. Their house was too protected. Yeah, but they also have this association with this doll as the child. Is it really bad that I also, he is showing me, the grandfather is showing me, like they had a room for when their granddaughter would come over and it's like a very small sort of like corner attic room upstairs and there was a rocking chair that was child size that they had it in. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) They told me more information. Yeah. They used to keep her in a rocking chair in the museum. Yeah. (laughs) They're saying, but that's why it's in a rocking chair is because it's always been in rocking chairs. Yeah. Um, I literally, you know, in Harry Potter, when they're searching for Horcruxes, It won't stop screeching at me. I know. <laughs> and um, they, like, take the sword and, like, smash the locket and all of those weird things come out and they show you scary things. And mm-hmm. there's just weird scenes of things happening and everyone sees something different. That's what they're, that's what I feel like I'm inside of. Like, things are, like, flying past me. Mm. But the information that is correct isn't coming from behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and is laced in gold. Interesting. They're showing me like if it's an, in a bubble, but like above me. Weird. So, yeah, I feel like this little girl died. I feel like she was sick or there was something wrong, but it wasn't good. And the grandparents were just like crushed about it. And they are the ones that cared the most, almost. You know how I talk about how sometimes souls come into people's lives and even though the child is yours, the child is actually there for someone else? Yeah. It's like this child was there for the grandparents. Got you. And once she passed, people were like, it happens, it's whatever, it's fine. And this grandfather was like, no, it's not fine. This is wrong. We need to do everything we possibly can to get justice and retribution for it and none of you want to do anything about it. Which is why he kept the doll. And had it in the rocking chair in her, like, nursery or room. She's, like, five or six. And she has brown hair. I think she's talking to me. Uh, That's where the the things laced in gold are coming from. But mm-hmm. hers is more of a white gold and comes from the sky. Because she's, like, I'm trying to figure out which spirit guide is talking to me. Because I'm, like, this doesn't feel like any of my spirit guides. And she was, like, it's because it's me. I mean, it's this woman that has dark hair. But again, I see her when she's in her 30s, but she's like showing me that she was this child. And she's like, the things that you're talking about, Annabelle, which is why this is, it's Achilles' heel, is there actually was a child that was associated with the doll because it used to be her doll. If people started thinking about it in that manner instead of a demon that is trying to make itself look like a child in order to like, create trust because there's that weird stigma. That's its Achilles heel. Sorry. Yes. That's no. what I'm saying. Well, no. It, it, remember in the video we talk about how it's like an angler fish? Yeah. And it has the little light at the end of it, but the little light at the end of it is the girl that people think it is? Yeah. If you were to know that it was... Because like the, the way angler fish get things and mm-hmm. eat them is by thinking that nothing is there. It's just the light. Yeah. So if you only think that it's the little girl that's a demon, they're like, even if you think it's a little girl that's a demon, you're still only looking at the light. But once you take that away and you shed the light on the big scary thing, now you see what it is and you can deal with it or ignore it or decide that it isn't that scary. If you take the light away, the little dangly bits, it has no power, which is what we're doing. That's well, why it's the Achilles heel. What I'm explaining is people having this more understanding or love association with this doll because it is Mm. from this woman or this little girl that is where the light is coming from because she's above it because she can't get closer so she's telling me that us talking about the fact that she exists and she is real because people are like there's no child with this doll it's just a demon which is true but also it is because a child passed and that understanding 
is going to help clear the energy of the doll itself allow it to shed light on it that it is just a silly demon type thing instead of i don't know does that make sense yeah that's what she's telling me you're using its weapon against itself yes yeah <laughs> using its light to shine light on itself. And we're not taking away from the fact that an anglerfish is a top predatory thing. Oh yeah, at no the that thing is fucking terrifying. But even though even if someone is scared of something, usually if you understand everything about the thing that you are scared of, it takes the fear away from it. Yes, because understanding is love. That is the light. Oh, why are you spitting facts? <laughs> That's why I'm explaining it like that. Yeah. Understanding is a form of love. Versed is men's activewear that's built to be comfortable, functional, and stylish. Their versatile clothing is made from fabrics that flex and fit perfectly for any activity, whether it's at the gym or on the go. Versed is fit for living, and these wardrobe staples are sure to be your favorite things to wear. Versed is available at Dick's Sporting Goods, or get 15% off regular price items when you go to VRST.com and use the promo code PODCAST15, all in caps. That's podcast 15, all capital letters. Understanding is love. If yeah, you but don't people have won't under- see that. I- I'm just saying it in a different <laughs> way so people will get it. That's all. It goes back to the suicide forest. Understanding. Yeah. So with this thing that's in Annabelle, the way that I perceive it is it's like, if you've ever watched Naruto... Naruto has the nine-tailed fox spirit that's, like, sealed within his essence. And the way that they portray it in the TV show is it's this giant fox spirit that is behind bars. However, the person in which has the seal, they can manipulate how strong the seal is. So there are times in which it's almost like the fox is, like, bubbling out of the like slats in between the bars of the, its cage and is able to manipulate things within our existence. That's kind of how Annabelle is portrayed to me in the sense of this thing is absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. We just did a video about the devil's rocking chair. <laughs> this thing is about 20,000 times worse. Yes. Honestly, it is. Because that thing in the devil's rocking chair, they had to absorb like 43 demons or whatever. (laughs) This thing, it doesn't need to do any of that. And it liked to tell me itself that it does not need to absorb things. It already is horrifying in it it of itself. You know, like if you were to go see uh, Jurassic Park and there's that like terrible, scary dinosaur noise that they put behind you in like the 3D theater or something and it's right before the Tyrannosaurus Rex is about to open its mouth and eat you. That like guttural sort of gurgling growl. That's what it sounds like. Because <laughs> I, I can't make that noise but I'm going to try to describe it to you. Yeah, it's that growl before the screech of I'm going to eat you and I can feel it clairsentiently within my chest and I can hear it and everything on my left side of my body hurts and my head hurts like someone punched me or like hit me right in the forehead because it's all the way from like the underside of my eyes to the back of my head like the whole top of my head same it's disgusting so you know but once we said the whole angler fish and that if you shed light on the scary thing and understand it then it takes the power away from it feel a lot better after saying that (laughs) yeah so the reason in which i see it in this way where it has the ability to like bubble out of its cage is because annabelle has the ability to manipulate the physical realm so because she's in this box it does in fact contain her in a way not necessarily because it's a physical box and it's a protector car. It's more of a like intention things. Mm. There's two boxes, which we'll get into in a second, but that's why they're showing me in a way of she can still have a range of terror is what they want me to say. But uh, she is still like confined to this box that she is in. I just asked if the guy that you're talking to, Johnny Gruel, is the one that gave the like subliminal messaging to Ed Warren to make the box look like the box that they came in and he's like yes yeah I know because he told me that and it's funny because the universe is hilarious and we talk about like witchcraft and intentions and it's just 
putting intentions into physical things that you could do spiritually, but it is and is valid in and of itself. It's just a different way to do intentions physically. Mm -hmm. And he's like, the universe is funny because you open the box with this intention of goodness, but also you put it back in the box. It'll help me put that thing back where it came from. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that's how we fixed it. It's funny. It's funny that it's in a box that looks like the doll when you buy it. Yes. Because the universe has a sense of humor. And whether there's good, bad, happy, sad, evil, God, not evil, whatever you want, it's hilarious. Yeah. So there's two boxes. Ugh, that's why we're a metaphysical comedy. God. Because everything in the metaphysical world is hilarious. It's a, or at least it's hilarious to live because what is it called? her mind is full of dad jokes. What are the, What is it called? I don't know. Sarcasm. The thing when irony. Wow. Really have a hard time uh, getting those words out. Yeah. The world is irony, and that's why we created a metaphysical comedy show. <laughs> God. Sorry. So there are, in fact, two boxes. So two there's, pickles. There's one that was created when... Ed Warren and Lorraine and Ed Warren were trying to fix the problem, I guess you could say. So there's that box. However, eventually the box started to wear and we needed to do repairs and they just figured, let's make another box so that we have a place for it to go in case we have to like do repairs because it would be really sucky for it to just sit down and do havoc to the world, you know, outside of a box. They should have just put it in a rocking chair. But it's interesting because in the video that we did the reaction to, I uh, we were like trying to f like sense the energy of these two boxes. And the first box, the box that it was originally came in, is filled with with like this low vibrational, staticky, angry energy. It's like being behind an electric fence. One time, my brother made me touch the gag joke gift of you pull the gum. <laughs> but it shocks you. And when I did that, it hurt really bad. And I couldn't let go of the gum because I was nine. And he's like, you want a piece of gum? And I was like, sure. And I grabbed it and pulled. And then the electricity touches your muscles so that you can't let go. And it just continues to hurt. Uh, and that's what the box feels like. Touching gag electric gum. <laughs> gag electric gum. Yes. They should probably like, Im like pulsate that. They all probably should pulsate it, or like they should just electric not fences. give it to children. <laughs> yeah. Because it was not okay. My arm hurt for, like, two days. Jesus You Christ. know, like, when you have to, like, throw up and you're a porcelain princess, and then you feel like you have abs for a couple of days? That's yep. what my arm felt like. Yeah. Not but, uh, safe. It's, it was filled with anger, because at that point in which they were trying to figure out what to do with the doll, Ed Warren and Lorraine were trying to trap it within this box and they had a lot of like fear so I was like you can't put this in a box with fear I really so like your translated voice. so that fear translated to anger so they used anger so and I also want to say like a lot of other mediums when they go to like these scary places and they're like you cannot come home with us and they sound like really stern and angry that's kind of the energy around the box is you can't come home with me that kind of energy because Liv and I are not like that we're like can we give you a hug are you okay what to, would like, you demons. <laughs> look like if you had clown boxers on right now and they're like I'm gonna make the clowns fall off the boxers that you're putting on me in your spiritual metaphysical mind and we're like oh uh -huh. then they turn into bouncy balls it's like that type of shit that's how we deal with things yeah because like we reacted to Sam and Colby where he was sitting in the rocking chair since I keep bringing that up and Sam was sitting there. I feel like I would have dealt with that situation with having someone like hold his hand because that puts the intention of love around him instead of like they were trying to be like, you cannot follow us home. We are in control. That type of thing, you know? Yeah, but that is but just it, a false just sense of confidence. And it's also physical manifestation of if I well, say yeah. it, it'll make it real. But it's a, just a different way of handling things. We handle it in a more loving way, which is like the second box. The second box has like love associated with it. It's very like quiet, mm -hmm. light, airy. It almost sounds like whispers. They, they want me to explain it sounds like 
cherry blossoms falling off a tree which i'm not entirely sure how that's making sound but that's what it sounds like that's cute (laughs) but usually when i associate things with love i associate it to that one scene in harry potter uh where lily potter puts old magic is what they refer to it as the love around harry potter and that's why dark things can't get to him or associate themselves with him because she surrounded him in love so when i use protection methods for myself and others it is usually associated with like pink energy blue energy gold energy and it is more in a I am going to protect you because I love and understand you. Mm. Whereas there are other people that use confidence, which is more of a like red toned or like, I don't know if they use white tone. Usually I see reds. So the way they explain the first box to me is it's that forward moving masculine energy. Yeah. Masculine and feminine. Yeah. It's, I know you guys already know that we're horse girls. And if you don't, Yes, we're psychic mediums and horse girls. You have two things to make fun you of can't us can't have both. <laughs> That's what you make me sound like. Well, no, people like to make fun like, of horse girls. Horse girl energy. They're like, oh, you're a horse girl. That explains everything. But also, Yeah, because you can control a 14-pound animal, 14,000-pound animal or some shit. 1,400. Something in there. Yeah. Yeah. With your thighs. <laughs> With your thighs. Thick That's thighs. crazy. Yeah, it is. But um, we're also weebs, so... You can also add Another that to thing your box. To make fun of us <laughs> but it's funny because um, so the first box is that loud, angry energy. And the reason I started talking about being horse girls is for me, I like to deal with horses in a way that's called natural horsemanship. And there's different ones, but doesn't matter which one you use because I'm going to tell you what I do. So there's two different types of ways to deal with horses and it depends on their personality and how they think about themselves and situations because of how they are. And that's why I like natural horsemanship. It's not you deal with the horse the same way. You deal with the horse in different ways depending on who they are as a horse. So in some situations, the box on the left which has forward moving, screaming, angry, confident energy of you're going to do what I do because no matter what you say, I'm going to scream louder. And if I'm louder than you in every possible conceivable way, you will just not be able to be heard over my loudness and you're going to stop your bullshit. Sometimes that works with horses. Other times you can't use that masculine forward moving, I'm going to be louder than you if I scream louder and you just can't hear anything. It's going to stop type thing or it's going to drown you out. You can't use that in every situation. What you can use is quiet things, which is a different way to de-escalate a situation. And it might work depending on whatever it is that you're doing. And that's the other box. But it's funny because you're talking about how people like to do the, you are not allowed to call, follow me. And this I'm not is trying not to my make phone number. Yeah. We're not trying to make fun of people. That's just like the stereotypical way of how people deal with things like that. They're like, you have to say it with authority and have your intention set of you cannot follow me home. But yeah. there's also another way of doing it. Well, my mom is one of those people. I know. She does. She the talks whole... about it like that too. Uh huh. Where she screams out, like, I am not coming in this room unless you take the temperature down yeah. or up or some shit. And sometimes people don't like natural horsemanship because they don't like to be told that the way in which they're dealing with things maybe isn't the best way to be dealing with it for their horse or another horse. And they're like, I don't care. I'm going to keep doing the ways I want to do things. And you're like, okay, well, that's fine. Have a nice day. But you're describing how we deal with things versus how other people might deal with dark entities. Yeah. And it's funny because I really like Kendrick Lamar, who's a rapper. I don't know who that is. That's okay. <laughs> I don't agree with all of his songs, but also you don't have to agree with everyone's songs all the time. It might be Ed Sheeran. It might be Kendrick Lamar. It might be Adele. Does not matter. I just have a respect for him and his music. And one of the songs that I like that he sings is called Poetic Justice. And they're telling me that with the theme of everything I'm saying about irony, metaphysical comedy, and dealing with dark things in a different way that maybe other people might not understand or think is silly... They deal with it in the Ed Warren angry, prickly box manner. We deal with it in poetic justice. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So I guess the uh, definition for poetic justice, because they kept showing me this while you're talking, and I was like, 
I don't have Kendrick Lamar in my head. Why are you telling me poetic justice? I don't get yeah. it. <laughs> they said, poetic justice is a noun, and it's the fact of experiencing a fitting or deserved retribution for one's actions. So the example that they give is, the noise was deafening, and it was poetic justice when the amplifiers stalled just before the start. And I think yeah. it's interesting that they're talking about uh, the amplifiers stalling before the start, and that it's poetic justice because... They're trying to get scary things to go away by having a louder noise. However, it's poetic justice when you meet it with love, understanding, and dad jokes. Yeah. Because <laughs> the assumed understanding is that you're going to be just as angry or try to be angrier to combat it, but sometimes well, that doesn't work. I think it's because people uh, view power as that like strong, angry thing, and they like people think that feminine energy is passive and people associate the word passive with weakness is what I'm getting at this point but the way I view feminine energy is it's like a river going down a mountain it's going to literally carve itself into the mountain it is not a weak energy what makes it passive is it's going to go around obstacles to get to its end goal whereas a masculine energy wants to blow through things so it's not weak it's just a different energy yeah it's just a way to do the same thing because masculine energy is like a a rock it's like you stand your ground which is why it blows through things yeah so that's the difference between the two box is that strong masculine energy which is that loud stand your ground energy with the uh, electric fence if you will the way they're explaining it to me though is that or in addition to complement what you're saying is that feminine energy or passive energy doesn't not stand their ground they just do it in a different way yeah they're still getting to their end goal they're just gonna every time i think about it is remember when we went hiking with brad and they're like i'm gonna go up this really dangerous cliff and both you and i are like we're not dumb we're just gonna go around the cliff because we're ladies (laughs) yeah we're still gonna get to the top but you guys might fall down and like break your necks and we're gonna watch it happen from the place on the other side of the hill that's not as steep and there's flowers that is the difference between feminine and masculine energy (laughs) (laughs) yeah they're like let me challenge this hill i'm cooler than you and we're like we respect the hill we're gonna go on the other side that's really funny so it's just two different ways of dealing with like protecting your energy you can be stronger than it or you can have that energy of trying to protect someone else for it or trying to put love into it in some way shape or form Mm -hmm. and both of which are very hard it's just that i think one is more innate to human nature than the other because we're predators so makes more sense for us to be aggressive than to not be aggressive you have to learn to not be aggressive yeah, because like, that's a predator response. We have our eyes in the front of our head. That's what your mom always says. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> your mom is a predator. <laughs> yeah, so you have to think differently. Perception. But yeah, in the video that we were reacting to, they were moving Annabelle, which is why we're talking about these two boxes. And they had this entire ritual because they brought in, uh, I think it might be the guy that like now owns it or watches over it. I don't know. Ed Warren specifically trained him to like be able to take uh annabelle out of the box oh yeah the guy that speaks words into existence but it was crazy because when we were watching it i was like there's a shadow behind him <laughs> <laughs> is that actually there like are you seeing that or is it something I'm, that is physically there and i'm just going crazy <laughs> yeah so the live basically told me that there was this dark thing that was with him however the dark thing was not a negative thing with him it was there to help him deal with Annabelle because a light spirit is not going to be able to do what it helped do. Mm -hmm. It was like when you get a static electricity that clings to you. That's kind of what this entity did. He like clinged his energy around whoever was going to touch the doll so that it couldn't mix the energy. Yeah, which is why it was a dark entity instead of a light entity because that would affect things in a different manner because they're making me see like if you put light in a shadow it's going to make the shadow disperse opposites attract positives repel so if you put something with the same sort of destructive clicky glitchy energy as the doll itself it creates the barrier yeah exactly repulsion 
spiritually. So he had, well, they did a prayer and then the he had like an assistant and the assistant took the doll out and put him back put her back into the other box and when he did that it's almost like the shadow put his hands over this man's hands like he was wearing gloves Mm -hmm. and the other guy was like thinking about his wife and kids the whole time (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's like thank god i don't have to touch that thing yeah it was really funny so that's Annabelle. There's a giant monstery anglerfish demon inside of it that likes to take on the persona of a child because... Well, do you want to talk about the uh, museum itself? I really like the person that was playing opera in the video. <laughs> so the way that Liv, which I think is a good way of explaining this place, it's like a kingdom and Annabelle is its king. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the thing that she's talking about that was singing opera because they were using their spirit box and the spirit box kept like singing opera like Like full fucking phrases of opera it was great we've referred to the spirit as like the little jester Mm -hmm. making everything like funny for the king annabelle Mm -hmm. yeah it is like that i forgot about that part i forgot about how i phrased it i remember the opera and then i liked it but i don't remember what i said because not (laughs) me that's cool. Yeah, the Annabelle doll is like the king and everything in there is like, fuck, it's scary. Don't look at it. Yeah, they were respectful of their king because mm-hmm. if they're not off with their head. Uh, yeah, but the, the little court jester was funny because the people were trying to talk specifically to the doll and the things in it and the opera thing is like, don't talk to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> being funny and and giving them information and answers that they needed just to pacify them because yeah. you don't speak to the king yeah <laughs> other things speak to you about the king or other people but so. yeah another thing you were saying is that human spirits can't go into the museum so it was mostly just like this stuffy dark feeling Oh, yeah, I forgot about that because there was a man and a woman and they were on the outside of the walls trying yeah. to talk. And you were talking to, to one of the people's that was on the investigation's grandmother. Oh, I forgot. She's yeah. Like, this is the only spirit that's like in here right now that's like a human spirit. Mm hmm. But she was like um, in there because she goes on investigations with the guys. I don't know whose grandmother it is. Mm-hmm. Ugh, I'm getting ner- dizzy again because we're talking about it. <sighs> I don't know whose grandmother it is on the investigation team, but it's one of the grandmothers there. She's, like, skinnier and um, gives me... I don't know why I want to say this because she doesn't really look like that, but she uh, is telling me to say, like, the grandmother from Looney Tunes that, like, uh, Tweety Bird lives with. Got you. Like, she doesn't give a fuck about anything, but she also has this sort of, like, happy-go-lucky yellow energy of, like, this is cool! Yeah, like Miriam from... uh courage the cowardly dog the dog is like everything's on fire what are you doing and she's like no honey it's fine yeah (laughs) she was kind of like if she was alive and was younger this is kind of what she would want to do because it was fun and she thinks it's interesting and now that she's dead she's like doesn't matter i can do whatever i want (laughs) right (laughs) so yeah it's really cute but she goes on investigations with you guys which is interesting she's a little kooky and out there but yeah yeah, the last thing that I remember from our thing, and if you hear the bumping noise, Liv is swaying back and forth against the desk. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I also was drinking my coffee that has ice cubes in it, and uh, yeah, this woman, she's really funny. She's like, I like went to church and like I did normal things, but sometimes people would ask me questions and I would give them like spiritual answers to it. <laughs> And they would just, like, cut off and be like, that's too weird for me. She's like, so then I would just ignore it, but that's, like, who I was on the inside. Yeah. So now she can just go do spooky things with you guys and protect you a little. is that I remember that I may not also remember is remember that woman thing that we were seeing from the, like, painting or whatever? Oh, in the hallway. Scary. Yeah. They were, like... There was two off in the hallway, and when I say two, I mean two people were off investigating in the hallway, and they were doing some sort of seance thing with their equipment, and there was this woman thing, us like talking to them, and she was like, like emaciated. Her skin was like loss of color, 
and she was like really scary yeah and it's funny because they thought she was nice because they're like can you make this emf reader go off if you're a good spirit and oh yeah <laughs> we talk about this in our uh paranormal investigation video that we do with the cemetery and uh, we didn't get an EMF reading on our on our thing because you have to physically manifest into like our plane of existence to have the EMF reader go off, which takes hella energy. And for them to say that, they're just it's like when you're talking to a Ouija board and they're like, "Are you my great aunt Sally?" and it says yes, but it's actually a demon. <laughs> yeah, because this woman was not okay. There was also so a man scared. that was like associated with some of the paintings that were in the hallway too, and he was scary as fizzuck as well. And he also was not like a man. What was he like? I don't remember. He looked like a grave robber. What does that look like? Okay, if you were to be a man that answers the front door of like. A nice estate mm -hmm. and then you died <laughs> <laughs> and now you're a zombie yeah that like raggedy clothing <laughs> and like looks like he could be a person but if he glitches he looks like this horrible scary thing that's cool and that's the hall that they, the hallway that they were in that saying, is my hopes and dreams in jesus christ's name are you a good spirit if so touch this emf reader and this woman that looks like she she literally plunged her hand into your chest my dude talking to the people that were there <laughs> yes because they don't know who you are yeah because Liv she... was like do you see the woman that like put her hand through her chest through this guy's chest and yeah. I was like um I don't know I would assume you're seeing like a normal looking woman because you say this lady but I see something really scary and, and she I was, was like, like oh yeah she's scary I was like Okay, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not seeing a human soul. I'm seeing something that's fucking horrifying because her hand looks like claws with long ass nails. And she just reached her hand into this dude's chest as the EMF reader was going off because he asked, are you a good soul in Jesus Christ's name? Yeah. When I die and I haunt some <laughs> horrible place like the Conjuring House... I'm just giving like a whole bunch of different ideas of my character for this this thing that we're gonna do, you know? Cause uh, I'm thinking of this weird guy that like glitches from being the guy that answers the door versus being a freaking zombie. I could have this like weird flickery fluorescent light and every time I come in like the hash slinging slash or you fucking hear fluorescent lights. And then um, every time it flickers, I change, you know? Would that be scary? Says the way I would do it is every time the lights flickered, it would just slowly turn into a rave. Life, death, life, death, life, death. And as you it's see actually me Nosferatu flip, flipping the way coming switch. closer to you, my images change from like Dementor to scary dinosaur to like the most horrifying thing you could ever seen to like a person that is from the eighties doing disco. And I'm like, come on, let's dance. Because once I finally get there and I'm next to you, it's like a dance party. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's really scary. And then it, it's like the reverse scary. Really scary. But the f closer I get to you, the better it happens. Okay. And then I'm going to teach people that's what bullying is like. If you don't know somebody, you shouldn't have preconceived notions. Because once you get close to them, they might want to have a dance party with you. I just want to scare Liv after I die before her. You could be the zombies from Tina's dreams where they just make out. With butts, <laughs> and horses, and boys. Yeah. That would be good. That would be good. So we're going to say thanks to our patrons, because without the 151 of you, this would not be possible. We also love you and are excited about the Discord server, because you guys are having a lot of good questions. Dallas. Sarah. Elisa. Gannon. Mariana. Victoria. Veronica. Cynthia. Antoinette. Chris. Chris von Kleist. Emily. Ivy. Meredith. Jim. Lindsay. Beth. Amy. Ashley. Annalie. Tara. Rosie. Bradley. Brandy. Brandy. Skull Storm. It's hard to read while you're moving. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Agaradas. Tiara. Hazel. Kay Carla. Marcy. Mia. Isabel. Jennifer. Rose Aura. Lena. Megan. Delilah. Faith. Jessica. Shanej. Yazi Sof. Glow. Naya. Alec. Haley. Does it say Alec Chinchilla? You already made this joke. I did. Abba Dabba Doo. Uh, Francesca. Well, no, we forgot. Sayagin. Say Alicia. 
Hamba, Jesse, Brittany, Brooke, Luding, Ellie, Maya, Flavende, Leanne, Ocarona, Mary, Anya, Abby, Kayla, Sarah, April, Ashley, TJ, Kyle, Cassie, Joanne, Charlie, Keisha, Helen, Lily, Desiree, Jessica, Natalie, Bercy, Alec, Sarah, Amanda, Tristan, Shantae, Amy, Tuna, Izzy, Katrina, Katrin, Super Aru, sorry, you can do it again, Super Aru, Alexa, Caitlin, Katkatsi, Shareholder, Itzel, Sophia, Bria, Patey, Leanne, Jacob, Bees, Brittany, Kendall, Shandy, Riley, Naya, Nakaya, what? <laughs> It went to four too fast. Malake. <laughs> oh, Korean. Kluver. Miana. Lillian. Jay. Larika. Misty. Catherine. Erica. Brianna. Kristen. Kima. Samantha. Christy. Vicky. Jacqueline. Erica. Ian. Vanessa. McKenna. Shannon. Cindy. Kylie. Mev. Renika. Trinity. Cass. Anthony. Violet. Peyton. Allie. Matt. Josie. Autumn, Thias, Jenny, Laurel, Brianna, Bradley, Sandy, Nas, Sherry, Christina, Sushi, Anita, Katie, Charles, Carly, Krista, Flo, Malake. Again. Always gotta end on the Malake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He'll never know. It's okay. Just, he'll never know. How are they gonna know? They'll when I tell know. him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Did you guys like us talking about Annabelle? Em, you were like, I don't know how we're going to do like a 50 minute podcast on this. Because we can't do a reaction video in this when we're just talking about Annabelle. But I somehow pulled things out of my ass because I just know things about Annabelle. Is it like you pulled things out of thin air? I don't get it. You look like I should get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go film a wing, a wing reading. That's really hard for me to say because I want to say wing wee reading. If you guys like this podcast, we are looking for dad jokes in our reviews. So if you're on Apple Podcast, you can leave a review and we want you to leave dad jokes and we will say them during our podcast. So you can get featured. Do it. What the hell are you waiting for? It'll be a good time. Also, I want to talk about the people that are our patrons in the Discord server. They added me in the Aquarius room and I think I might have friends that are Aquariuses now. Asparagus. Oh, Corona. Is and if you don't know, Liv is a Leo, and apparently Leos and Aquarius's sides don't get along because they do things in a similar manner, but in the complete opposite ways. Yes. So asparagus's asparagi are hard for me to tolerate. However, they added me in the asparagi chat room on Discord, and I think I might have to be friends with them. And it hurts me to say that because you guys are kind of cool. And maybe you make my peace smell, so, you know. Because you're an asparagus. <laughs> Do you feel special? <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, we're your Minnesota Sidekicks! Wow. <laughs> <laughs>